Okay guys, I'm here with my review of WWE's No Way Out 2012 and I thought this was kind of an average show. A lot of filler stuff. Um, the main event, my god was that overbooked. Just way too much unnecessary shit. It was like some bullshit you would see on Raw. And that really left a bad taste in my mouth finishing this show up. It started off good. It had some great matches. All the matches we expected to be great were. Um, the main event did not deliver in my opinion. And there was just filler matches like Hunico versus Sinkara, shit you would see on SmackDown. I mean, who cares about that? The crowd did not care at all for that one. Um, some stuff I thought would be bad, like the tuxedo match was actually pretty good. Um, so yeah, there was a few things here and there I didn't like, but the show was pretty good for the most part, but the, the end just oh, killed it, and it just became an average filler pay-per-view. Um, so yeah, I didn't really care much for it. Some of it was boring. So that's just my overall thoughts on this show. Uh, so it starts with the pre-show, Brodus Clay versus David Otunga. Um, Otunga works the leg, and then he loses by countout. He just leaves the ring and doesn't get back in. Uh, Josh Matthews interviews Cena. He says everyone knows what is at stake tonight. And he says the face of the WWE will change. Don't you lie to me, Cena. You know that no matter what happens here, the person's coming right back, no matter who gets fired. So, yeah. We get Sheamus versus Dolph Ziggler. Uh, you know, this might actually be the match of the night. I know Christian Cody was good. Crowd wasn't that into that one. Uh, the triple threat was really good. But I'm going to have to say that this is probably my match of the night right here. Um... Dolph has Vicky kiss him before the match, and then Sheamus goes for the bro kick like he did Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. I thought that was great. Uh, Dolph escapes. Um, there was a spot where Sheamus, uh, Dolph Ziggler is on the top rope. Not the top rope, but just the very top rope in the middle. He's not standing on the turnbuckle. And he like slaps Sheamus or something, and Sheamus knocks him off the top rope directly to the floor. I thought he dislocated an elbow or something. Ziggler was a bump machine out there tonight. It was very impressive. Uh, he hits Ziggler hits a face buster off the top rope. Fans were into all the near falls. When Sheamus kicked out of this face buster, the place popped big time. Um, really helped make this match. Uh, Sheamus hits white noise and a bro kick for the win. Um, great match like we all expected it to be. I really hope this leads to Ziggler getting more of a push. Uh, because he's got all the skills. I feel like I've said it a million times, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, Vince is backstage. Laurinaitis apologizes to Vince, says the lights aren't good for someone with a concussion. Vince just walks away. Josh Matthews comes up. Uh, Laurinaitis just puts him down, says he sucks at announcing. He couldn't make it as a wrestler. Tuxedo match with Santino versus Ricardo. Um, Ricardo rips off Santino's pants, revealing a cobra sock. Uh, Santino wins with a Cobra kick, and then he rips off Ricardo's pants, winning the match. And Ricardo is wearing these underwear with Alberto Del Rio's face on the back. It was pretty funny. Backstage, Punk tells Matt Stryker the match is about the title, not AJ. AJ comes up, kisses his cheek, uh, then gives Stryker the old stink eye. I think it's funny how he's always trying to get words from AJ, or uh, her thoughts. And she just looks at him like he's a piece of shit. <laughs> that is funny. Um, so Cody versus Christian for the Intercontinental title. Uh, Cody kicks out of the kill switch. So I'm guessing that's just a regular move now. Probably for the best. Christian hits the frog or goes for the frog splash. Cody gets the knees up. This looked really sick. Uh, Christian wins with a spear. Finally. Um, good match. Crowd wasn't that into it, especially at first, but uh, overall I thought they kind of got the fans into it because it was a good match. And yeah, that's another one I expected to be good. Then we get a fatal four way tag match um, with Primo and Epico with Rosa and AW versus Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd, uh, Titus O'Neill and Darren Young, and the Usos. Um, Tyson hits a Hurricane Rana on Primo to the outside, hitting all the guys, taking them all out. Pretty awesome spot. 
Uh, A.W. tosses Primo in. Darren Young throws him up, puts his knees up, and smashes him into Primo's stomach, getting the win. Uh, afterwards, A.W. comes in, high-fives Darren and O'Neal, um, who are the new number one contenders for the tag belts. Primo punches A.W., and then Young, O'Neal, and A.W. beat up Primo and Epico. So, I mean, this hasn't even been on TV in a while. Um, I do have to say that I enjoyed the match. I'm glad all these guys were able to get a payday from the show. Uh, I thought they were, you know, they worked a decent match out there. It is something you would see on SmackDown, though. I mean, you can't kid yourselves. That's that's what it was. It was a typical SmackDown thing. And, I mean, that's just another filler match, but it was okay. And this AW thing that hasn't even been on TV in like three weeks, four weeks, um, with the whole Mason, Ryan, Primo, and Epco, I mean, they don't even know where they're going with this. They have no clue. And A.W. is now managing, I guess, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil, possibly feud with Primo and Epico. Um, who knows? Who really cares? I think it could be good. It does have potential if they do something with it. But they haven't done anything with him before. So, I mean, we'll just have to see what happens with that. But, yeah. So, that happened with the A.W. turn on Primo and Epico. Triple H comes out. Says he has a real job, a corporate job, but he's a fighter. Triple H says his arms should be 100% by SummerSlam, and he wants to fight Brock really bad. This was a bad promo by Triple H. This was really stupid. Uh, he challenges him to a match at SummerSlam, or Brock can be a quitter. We all knew this was coming, so I wasn't really surprised. I expected it to be better, and it just wasn't. Uh, he just kept saying he wanted to fight Brock. He wanted to fight Brock really bad. And uh, So backstage, AJ comes up to Daniel Bryan, says she has a part of her that hasn't gotten over him, and wishes him good luck. Uh, then we get Beth Phoenix versus Layla for the Divas title. Layla grabs Beth's crown and starts dancing around the ring, uh, and Layla eventually wins with a neckbreaker. This was actually a pretty good match. It sounds a little... <laughs> Uh, silly because of the crown bit, but overall it was pretty good. Much better than I expected. AJ wishes Kane luck. He kisses her. That's it. Uh, Hunico versus Sinkara. Sinkara wins with the La Mystica Slam. Crowd didn't really care. Uh, triple threat match. Kane versus Daniel Bryan versus CM Punk for the WWE title. Uh, at first, Punk and Bryan actually worked together, just kicking the hell out of Kane. Um, this was pretty cool. Uh, Kane has Brian on his shoulders at one point, and Punk clotheslines him off like the old Doomsday device. AJ comes out. Punk pushes Kane onto the apron, or into the ropes, knocking AJ off the apron. Kane's distracted by this, uh, seeing AJ hurt. So he turns around. Punk hits him with the GTS, gets the win. Afterwards, Kane carries AJ to the back, and AJ is smiling at Punk on her way up the ramp. So it's kind of like she did all this to distract Kane so that Punk could win. At least that's what I got from it. And it was a good match. Very fast paced. A lot of near falls. Um, and I did enjoy it. I just I thought the crowd was into Seamus Ziggler more. Um, they were really into Punk here too. And they were into this match. But I just think everything was... Uh, much better with Sheamus and Ziggler. Um, but these two matches were very good. And the finish, I don't know. I really wanted Daniel Bryan to win this. And, I mean, I know CM Punk was tweeting something about how uh, he removed these tweets about how he doesn't like his bosses and it's decisions like this that make him wonder why people still watch. So hearing those... Uh, comments, I think Friday, I was wondering what the hell he was talking about. Maybe they wanted to put the belt on Kane, which would be horrible. But because he's friends with Daniel Bryan in real life, I didn't think he would get upset about Daniel Bryan winning. Um, so, you know, maybe WWE changed their minds. I'm sure they changed their minds all weekend over what they wanted to have happen here. Um, but it looks like we're going to have more Kane, Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, AJ, Love fest going on uh, for a while. Um, it's not over yet. 
but this was a good match. Then Dan Delaney and Rob Grimes versus Ryback. The jobbers sing the old WrestleMania song. Uh, Ryback destroys these guys. He says, feed me three, feed me four. Um, I really hope they do that because the fans were going crazy with the Goldberg chants. And if WWE is truly unhappy with that, they need to do something to separate him from Goldberg. I don't remember Goldberg really doing the handicap match gimmick. So, you know, increase it to three jobbers. Four's a bit much. By the time he's done with three, uh, let's just start putting Ryback in some real matches because that's what's going to help get him over. Um, I think three is the limit. They should not put him out there with four guys. Uh, so then we get Cena versus Big Show in the steel cage match. Vince and Laurinaitis are at ringside. Oh my god, the first part of this match was so boring. Um, Show did hit a Vader bomb and started to pick up. Uh, he walks across the top rope like he's doing old school, and he misses a big, uh, big elbow. Laurinaitis tries to shut the door on John Cena. Vince pushes him. Um, he opens the door, and then Laurinaitis pushes Vince from behind, causing Vince to slam the door on Cena's head. Um, big Show hits the ref with a WMD. He knocks out Cena with a WMD. And then Brodus Clay comes out with a chair. Oh my god. Seriously. Brodus Clay. And he's begging Big Show to come out of the cage. Um, Big Show goes to climb out. Like, that's going to change anything. And of course, Brodus walks around. He's got the chair. And then uh, Alex Riley and Santino come. And they start to climb the cage to keep Big Show in. And Big Show punches him through the cage, knocking him out. <laughs> then Zack Ryder comes out and he gets knocked out, so Big Show's climbing back up, and Kofi Kingston comes out, gets on the top, and kicks Big Show down. So, Cena gets up. He hits the attitude adjustment, but the referee's out, so he can't pin him. So he goes to climb, but John Laurinaitis has a crutch on the outside, and he's swinging it at John Cena. So Brodus Clay has to go stick his nose in this again, and grabs Laurinaitis, holds him back. Cena jumps down, wins the match. Um... He tells Brodus to, you know, leave Laurinaitis, go away or something. And he picks Laurinaitis up for an attitude adjustment. Vince tells Laurinaitis, you're fired. And he gets an attitude adjustment through a weak-ass Spanish announce table that I'm surprised stood this long. It was so weak. It just completely collapsed like a cardboard box. And that was it. That was the entire show. Um just really average and uh, didn't do much for me. The, f the best match was the opener, not the pre-show, the actual Sheamus Ziggler match. And then you would get a couple more good matches throughout the show, but uh, some stuff, I mean, it just, even if it was okay, this is a pay-per-view. I mean, you're asking people to pay like, uh, what is it, $55 for this crap? Oh, man, it is not worth that at all. No matter how much uh, you were able to pull out of this show that you, to find some type of enjoyment, um, you cannot tell me this is worth $55. I mean, you can buy a freaking PlayStation 3 game or something and get a lot more enjoyment out of that than watching this show once. And, of course, the tons of recaps on Raw, and it was just not very good. I think... Uh, probably my favorite show this year has been Extreme Rules. I thought that was really good. I was into that entire show. and It's just they need to bring something into this. This Brodus Clay stuff was just horrible when I saw him out there. I, I just couldn't even believe it. Brodus Clay is getting involved in the main event. He is a one-trick pony, this guy. He can dance, and I never even liked that. So, I mean, I can't even believe he was involved in this. It was just way too much. And Alex, Rock, the job squad coming out for this? Oh, ridiculous. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my thoughts on WWE No Way Out. I hope you guys liked the review. Leave your thoughts on this show in the comments below, and thanks for watching.